Hello, welcome to another episode of the Korean Studying Ramble. So uh, I guess my last update was on Christmas, and I I really don't remember what I talked about. But I'm just gonna try to give an update of what I've been doing recently, and I may overlap and uh, talk about stuff I did in December. But um, yeah, so I did take small breaks for World of Warcraft, but and uh, and I kind of justified it by saying I'm going to play in using the Korean version of the game, and that and I did use at first. I was very as I always am. I was very diligent looking up all the these vocabulary words that are used in the game when you turn into uh, using the Korean version. And I made flashcards, but eventually I'm like, you know what, let's just use English so that I can, uh, and I, I can kind of multitask and, um, yeah, you know, like I'll watch Korean videos while I play or listen to Korean uh, vocabulary lists or something as I'm playing as, which, is something I I, have, I did before with German way back in the day when I was a computer gaming nerd addicted to EverQuest, um, and then later World of Warcraft, but um, but especially EverQuest, and um, yeah, it's it's not as effective obviously as uh, playing the game in Korean, and is not really count as studying, and is in fact a complete distraction from learning Korean, but you know sometimes you need a break and. Um, and I, I live alone, so uh, multiplayer games are also a good way to to hang out with people. It's something I, I just don't really do after work otherwise. So, um, you can do that with languages, though, of course, too. Just <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So uh, I did do that with the Korean. Did learn or uh, review some, and I actually haven't looked at it in a while, so I probably should brush it out, take it out, brush it off, and uh, look at it again. The vocabulary I got from the game, it's I'm sure it's somewhat useful in real life not just in the game. Um, let's see. So um, in December, I think I was, and I'm, I was, I continue doing this. I had purchased a, uh, off the Google Play Store, I purchased a novel um, like Goblin Survival. It, it's, a, it's a translation of a light novel in Japanese. And I read the first book and I purchased all three books. It's only a three book series. Um, so it's pretty short. And it's about this guy who gets reincarnated in a video game uh, as a goblin as opposed to a human, which he would much prefer to be or probably anything else besides a goblin. And, and he can't even speak the human language. And it's an interesting uh, concept. I thought, you know, it's not, it's obviously taking, uh, building upon uh, the whole being reincarnated in a video game that's been really popular the past 15 years or so. And, um, Putting, taking video game RPGs and making uh, plots of stories about people being trapped in them or living in them or something, and that that's not too original, but it's a nice twist. The other twist, if you look at the cover, is there is a blonde girl with big boobs, and she made an appearance towards the end. Unfortunately, uh, she is um, a Japanese men have a fetish for blonde girls with big boobs, um, and. So this character, unfortunately, is very boring. And um, the the story gets a lot less interesting the more that he interacts with this girl, unfortunately. But uh, on the plus side, uh, the language level is the lowest language level I have encountered in a Korean novel. So that's wonderful. It is really, really low-level Korean. That's hard to find, right? Uh, unless you go to children's books. This is definitely not a children's book. It's, uh, he keeps calling her boobs. So very adult. Um, and um, however, um, the, the plot, again, is boring, but the language level is good. The vocabulary repeats a lot. Uh, I think it's good for my Korean. Uh, the one, another drawback is he ends many sentences with gob. And so when I start thinking in Korean, sometimes I'm adding gob to my end of my sentence in Korean. So that's not so good, but I'm sure that will just, uh, that won't be too much of a problem as I move on. That's that novel. Um, I have been using quite a bit of, I use a lot of Monkey. Um, Lamont made a video recently about him using a 1,000 card deck that's uh, published by Refold for his Spanish studies because he started Spanish a couple months ago and obviously as a beginner Spanish, the beginner th these decks are kind of meant for him. 
uh, by Refold, and he has a kind of a, I'm not sure he has a business association with them, but definitely like a friendly relationship with them. So um, he has had, if you look at his, excuse me. Um, if you look at his videos, you'll see he has kind of a mixed relationship with Anki. He makes <clears throat> some videos about um, like how to use Anki, kind of talking about how good it is. And then he'll make a video about how he, <laughs> He has this one deck, it's like adding two cards a day or something and because using Anki is so damn hard. And yeah, it's hard because <laughs> they get in that habit and when you don't want to do it, you just stop doing it. And uh, in my case, I have used flashcard decks since the iPhone or even the, I guess the, the iPod to go back to the, before the iPhone, well, not before the iPhone, but before I could afford an iPhone. Um, the iPod, which was uh, the iPod Touch was out. They had uh, flashcard apps with space repetition. That was kind of my introduction. I'm not sure how long anki has been around. Is maybe before that, probably on the computer, but I didn't know anything about it until um, I started exploring apps on my phone or the app store. Yeah, so um, my relationship with uh, SRS is that I make a deck, I go at it, and I eventually burn out on the deck. And I start over with a new deck. Yeah, that's kind of, or I go back to the old deck and I kind of suspend the old cards, start over or do something, something to get back into it. And uh, I, I do, so I do a lot of rote memorization, but I don't really use SRS in the way it's intended um, to just stay with one deck forever and amen and to study that same vocabulary spaced over time uh, so that it, you know it perfectly. Doesn't work for me. But I have found that the uh, flashcard apps have been extremely helpful with my Japanese simply because um, I, no matter how much I tried, I could not immerse in Japanese. It was just too difficult. The language, the uh, kanji, the, the hiragana, no spaces, the, the vocabulary was so different from English, so, so hard. Uh, and so the flashcard apps uh, kind of slowly got me to get better at that. So that was good. Um, what I'm doing anyway, so that's kind of been my experience and it's similar to Lamont. What he did in his video recently was he took this thousand card deck and he just kind of went through it and did basically one day of it so that he got all the cards from a uh, unseen status to, I guess, a learning status. So he got it right after the 10 minute default interval on Anki. A thousand cards is a lot. That's actually the limit that I found myself on days that I've gone crazy with Anki for, some, for, for similar type activities. And uh, I never did a thousand new cards like he did. I think I, the most I did was 600. And then there were like 400 reviews or maybe some other decks. But around a thousand was, it's, it's like an all day thing where I just kind of did Anki all day. And uh, that was his experience. And a very interesting video. Of course, as you're watching, you're thinking to yourself, oh, this is interesting, but this is not how I, how we're supposed to use Anki. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, Trying to get, I, I to me, uh, I, uh, getting rote memorization, space SRS apps to work for me has been one of the, a couple, I have a couple challenges with learning languages um, effectively, and that's one that I've always tried to tweak. Um, I used to do, uh, ha have it set up so the flashcard app would show me missed cards uh, within a very short interval, like 20 seconds, uh, uh, one minute, two minutes at the maximum and then increase the intervals to like say 10 minutes and then the next day. And uh, recently I tried using that 10 minute interval, which is the default for Anki, which I never even tried. It's like, it's so weird. I guess other people, they'll, they'll use defaults and I'm, I'm like, screw defaults. I just immediately start making it the way I think it should be. Um, in this case, that 10 minute actually works really well. I didn't see how that could possibly work for cards that you're learning um, brand new it seemed that was way too long to look at a card and then not look at it for 10 more minutes and then look at it again. It's like, no, you should do it much sooner. But I'm um, finding that 10 minutes actually is a, is a really, really works really well. And it's a lot less stressful on your brain and less exhausting. So, um, and so like you, even if you're doing like, a, um, I mean, missing, if you're, if you're having a bad day, if you're taking on lots of new cards or you kind of screwed things up and so you're, you're, not getting the 85% or anywhere near that, like the app, like everyone recommends that you have an 85% success rate. I don't get that uh, too often unless I'm doing stuff that it's like all review. 
um, if I'm doing new material, then 85% success is not. I, I found it. That's a that's a pipe dream. Um, I may not be as smart as some of these people making these other YouTubers that are making videos about learning languages. Probably not. Uh, some of them are med students and stuff, or doctors or whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, but I found that this uh, 10 minute. Actually, I'm actually doing a 15 minute because Flashcards Deluxe uh, had only had 15 minutes as an option. It was either uh, something uh, basically 15 minutes or two minutes, and I tried the 15 minute, and um, it's really good. Uh, you can go through all your, get all your reviews done and you'll be, and, and it won't show it because there's a 15 minute delay before you see those missed cards. You can actually be like, Hey, I'm done for the day. And you're not really good. Well, you kind of are, but you aren't because the cards, the app's going to show you those cards you missed uh, after that 15 minute interval. So they'll become uh, due again. But in effect, you've actually reviewed all the cards. So if you really don't want to, you're kind of done. You could say, Hey, I looked at all my cards. That's good enough. Absolutely good enough. And you can just wait till the next day. Uh, but or you can just, of course, do those cards after the 15 minutes. Go through them again. Uh, keep doing them every 15, every so often throughout the day until you get them all right, which is what I tend to do. And it works. It works well. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. Um, that is the kind of a big switch for my study routine. What that's working well. The other something that's not working so, as well as I would like it to be though is making sentence cards. I was kind of wondering if uh, by switching this up. Uh, for space uh, repetition by using 50, like these long interviews uh, intervals, this is kind of one reason I started trying it. I'm trying to I was trying to get sentence cards to be uh, manageable for me, or sentence decks. And um, because I, I essentially, if I, I burn out on those so way too fast, but everyone says they're the best. Um, but I get so burned out on them. It's like maybe, of course, I might start doing them for a few days, and they seem all it seems all great. But then after several days go by. Um, no, <laughs> I just don't want to do them. I just don't want to do them. And if I sit down and try to force myself to do them, um, I hate it because it, of course, if you get a card, right, that's, that's all well and good. No problem. But then you start missing cards, um, because it's a sentence, it has all this information. It's like, you're trying to process this information to guess, you know, that part that you don't understand. And that just gets exhausting. And it's not like a vocabulary card. We just kind of stare at it and wait a second or two and then it's like you know it or you don't and just move on you don't just you just don't sit there and try at least i don't uh, for the sentence cards i absolutely was and yeah so the uh, sentence card is not working out so well i'm gonna be trying something else um i may have tried this in the past it didn't work i'm guessing it's not gonna work but we'll see i'm trying to do um i'm doing sentence mining or vocabulary mining and i'm basic instead of uh, using a pre-made deck which i was using um Evita's pre-made uh, Korean deck, which I, although I, th I think it's really good, um, it's a pre-made deck. And I, I think uh, having uh, 5,000 cards or several thousand cards that are unseen that I'm staring at every time I finish and thinking and, and kind of thinking, when am I going to finish these? And maybe like six months from now is just too depressing. So <laughs> I'm going to, I think eliminating that is, is good and I'm going to eliminate it. And so that's what I, that's really why I'm stopping the pre-made decks. Otherwise I like the pre-made decks a lot. They, she did, they, they find good vocabulary and a good order for you to study. It works well. But, um, for me somehow just having that list of uh, unseen words that are forever and amen is too depressing. Um, and I also kind of like to have, um, I like to have, um, to study stuff uh, in uh, to to look for stuff to study and do that myself uh, because then, um, then it's more personal, which is kind of good. Although, if it's curated by someone who knows what they're doing, that's also kind of good. So I don't know. Either both are kind of neither one. No big deal on that. Um, as far as where I'm uh, sentence mining, I'm clearly using my light novel books and Link to do that, and. Um, I'm basically copy and paste uh, from Link into my app uh, on my phone, so that works really well. I'm also I have a book here. Uh, it's in the other room. Uh, basically, a uh, topic in 30 days it is a bunch of vocabulary uh, with example sentences. I'm just looking through. Uh, open up a page, look for a, a, a bite size list of vocabulary there that I like, and adding that in sometimes, and uh, going through my grammar book and making uh, bite size. 
entering a bit of grammar points that are bite-sized that way. So far, that's kind of working. I've never really made uh, spaced repetition work for me for studying grammar. Grammar's always been really intense cramming and then hoping somehow that when I go to immerse, I'll notice that pattern and that will reinforce it. <laughs> or, or if I was in Japan or had a study part, a way to use it, I would try to use it in conversation. Um, that was for Japanese. And uh, for Korean, I've got no one to talk to. My immersion's kind of eh. Uh, I am reading novels, but um, I don't know. That kind of, it depends on the grammar structure. Some of it does repeat enough that I'm getting it uh, that way, but not so much. A lot of it's not. Gosh, you know what? There's so many grammar things in, in Korean I hate. Like the reported speech, I absolutely detest that. I detest it. I feel like everything about Korean grammar is like, it's like they took Japanese and they just decided like, how can we make this horribly difficult? And let's, and they did it. That's just, that, that seems to be, to me, how the Korean language was born. They took Japanese and they made it more difficult. Um, I am doing italki lessons in Japanese. I, they have group lessons in Japanese, not in Korean. I wish to God they did. They don't. Uh, I love having fellow people to suffer with me studying this language uh, and learn with and bond with, but that's just not possible with Korean on italki. So, but Japanese it is. So I tried that was I tried a one. That's my first time. I tried a, a group lesson in Japanese. It went well. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I don't need it in Japanese because I'm totally fluent uh, and I can um, I can do one on one lessons and always have a great time. I don't need a necessarily need a partner in crime to sit down and uh, study with. But it was okay. I liked it. I enjoyed it, and I signed up for more. Uh, one of them I'm really looking forward to is this Kansai Ben. When I did a one Kansai Ben lesson before with a one-on-one tutor about a year ago, maybe, or six months ago, I really enjoyed it. I don't know. I didn't follow up. This one I might because I like having, if it's a group format, I just like that so much more. Um, if, if you could speak in a dialect in a foreign language, it, that seems so cool to me. But at the same time, it's also like a plus. You don't need it. And most of what you're good, the material you're going to consume is going to be in the standard. So you really need to, Focus on standard first and then do dialect afterwards, you know, when, basically once you're intermediate and pretty comfortable. Um, unless you're abroad living in the city that you're in. Like if I was in Busan learning Korean, then I probably would absolutely learn the uh, Busan dialect as I was learning standard, right side by side. And I probably would want to, yeah, I probably would want to use the Busan dialect actually. More than depending. I mean, think about at least Japan. Uh, I don't know so much about Korea. They have dialects throughout Japan, but it seems like, although Kansai Ben's pretty big, they're pretty proud of theirs. But the other ones, the other dialects, I think they're dying out. And um, young people are actually just using standard Japanese or mix. They're mixing standard Japanese with a little bit of, with a bit of dialect. But um, yeah. So I don't know, uh, but like, for example, if, if you're in Busan and more than half the time people speak, they're, they're speaking standard Korean, then as a foreigner, I probably would not, I would just go with standard. I wouldn't try to use dialect just to be extra cool. Um, but if most of the people, majority, like 90% are speaking Busan or, or dialect around you, then I would actually want to, uh, you know, be just like everyone around me. That would be so cool. And uh, yeah. But not in Korea. This is just speculation for something that probably will never happen. Um, who knows, though? Maybe I'll quit my job, move to Korea. Thought about it. Probably not going to happen thanks to masks and uh, the, the uh, coronavirus, but um, still not ruled out. Still an option. That is uh, basically my, um, my update. And uh, yeah, just uh, doing lots of spaced repetition, trying to tweak that so that, and then trying to immerse and then trying to find italki. I'm gonna want to, I wanna find an italki tutor that will teach me using all Korean with, or, or really almost all Korean without me having to remind her constantly to not speak English. Um, I found some, I, had, I did have a nice teacher, but she spoke too much English. I, that's why I'm not using her. I might go back to her though. But, ah. Uh, I really want if, if if you could just find a teacher, just like why is that so hard? If you just, if you want to learn English, 
then the majority of teachers are going to teach you using English. Why, why is it so hard the other way for all the other languages? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's the update. Um, anyway, any comments, uh, any advice from me would be wonderful. If you have any experiences that uh, yourself learning languages updates, I'd be happy to read about that in the comments. Thanks. Have a good one.